Hey guys, welcome to episode 22 of Unethical Podcast. The sky is purple. We are welcoming back Kent Chungus from True Crime Kent for guest host this episode, and we are going to be discussing some unethical experiments in psychology. Welcome to Unethical Podcast. It's psychology week here at Unethical Podcast, so I'm finally going to put my $75,000 degree to use. Yes. Hey, we've been waiting. We're going to move away from our typical format for this one a little bit. I'm going to break down three connected unethical psychological experiments. So anyone who's taken a psychology course will have heard of these, and anyone who's taken an ethics class will probably know a little bit more, but... One of the things about our older studies is that you kind of learn that ethics stand in the way of progress, but as a society, we respect the ethical code that goes with the research anyway, because unethical research makes all research void. So if there is no standard, what's to stop some asshat from publishing some bullshit about vaccines causing autism and allowing for a potentially catastrophic public health crisis? We wouldn't want that. No, of course not. (laughs) I'm like, you got me there. I'm not going to say anything. Tally just, yep, we got it. (laughs) Okay, but at least the shit isn't happening anymore. So let's begin. So we're going to start off. This is a very mild one. Everybody can settle in a little bit. We're going to talk about the ash conformity experiments. In In the 1950s, he did several over the course of about 10 years. Uh, Solomon Ash, he was a social psychologist. He designed a series of experiments to determine how individuals either conform or defy a group majority. So in the first experiment, eight men were presented with an image of a line and then an image of two lines. The participants were told that they were there to take part in research on learning and they were asked one by one, which of the second two lines matched the length of the first line. Seven out of the eight men present were Confederates. And the term Confederates means they are actors in on the study. Oh. I went went a different way there. That's a whole different (laughs) meaning down down here. Yeah. They showed up in full uniform and... uh... (laughs) Ready to reenact something. I was just thinking, like, what an odd fact that she had there. I'm like, I don't know how it's relevant, but okay. (laughs) Side note, six of them were from the Red Army. (laughs) I don't know. Perhaps they were Yankees. I don't know. The South will rise again. Anyways. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. So the eighth man in the study was the subject of interest. Okay. They ran it 18 times. On 12 of those 18 experiments, all seven of the Confederates would give the wrong answer. So they did a total of 50 experiments. At the end, 36.8% of the participants conformed to giving the incorrect answers as well, even though they knew that the answer was wrong. The participants were debriefed after the experiment was after the experiment was over, and they were told what they were actually there to study, which was conformity. And they were asked if they did know the correct answer but chose to conform, and then they were asked a series of questions about themselves to determine sort of individual factors about their own levels of confidence, extroversion, whether they were a leader or a follower, things like that. So the experiment ultimately showed that most people would give the correct answer pretty much regardless of what everyone else was saying. So the experiment was also reconducted with differing rates of actors who would give the correct answer. So sometimes it would be half of the Confederates would give the wrong answer. Uh, Other times it would be, you know, almost all of them, but maybe one would stand with this guy who knew that the answer was wrong. Uh, Sometimes they would bring in two participants instead of just one, and then those two participants could act as sort of like, if will they both 
conform? If one doesn't conform, will the other one still conform? So they, they redid this a ton of times over about a decade. And they always presented the study in the same way. It was a study on learning. I feel like this is like a TikTok challenge now. I feel like people do this on TikTok, see if they can trick their friend into believing something that's not true. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, probably. <laughs> What's this called again? The Solomon study? What is it again? What's it called? The Ash Conformity Experiment. Ash Conformity. I'm going to start a TikTok trend. My sociology <laughs> teacher did this to us once. And I was like, and I called everyone a sons of bitches. And then I got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if, if they had done if they if the test subject had if half of them had been gothic would they uh, have answered correctly because they're nonconformists. You could also ask the hippies. I feel like that was a long way to round around to make a bad joke, and I want to apologize up front for that. I'm gonna shut this the fuck the, up now. You have another one because that's this is in the back of that joke. You got a bad one coming now too because I hope I'm, I'm working on one. I'm sure. Give me just a minute. <laughs> It's coming. (laughs) (laughs) What do you think that you would do? Would you conform or would you give the right answer because you knew it was right? And be honest. Oh, I already know because it happened to me in sociology class. (laughs) I did not conform and I called everyone sons of bitches and then I got told to leave. Is that a true story? This is a true story, yes. (laughs) Most of what I say is true. I'd love just I'd love to be like yeah I wouldn't conform but I probably end up would end up conforming. For my answer, I'm just gonna say I like to argue, so it would have been fun to try and argue out. Uh, like you're gonna tell me that I'm wrong on this, let's go. I'll argue that all day because I know I'm right. Right. We should have went like, to college together. Yeah, it would have been fun. Yeah, would have. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to become a comedian. Do 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 do. <sighs> college is for not me anyways next (laughs) well uh, i once took a conservative viewpoint that i didn't even believe in in a liberal studies class in college just to piss everybody in the room off (laughs) and they all wanted to fight me by the end of the class i don't think i would have had a problem being like y'all are fucking retarded yeah the ball is blue (laughs) i'm with you on that i will argue about anything with anyone (laughs) and i didn't even believe what i was saying (laughs) yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've always been an argumentative little brat. Well, the only reason I did that is because I just sit back and watch this like echo chamber, like you know what I mean. Like it was nobody was ever challenging anything that they had to say ever, and I just got exactly. back. That was like right after I got out of the military, so I'm just kind of like and, and watching all these kids. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, like everything is an injustice. Blah, 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 blah. Abortion, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> socialism. Blah, blah. And it, like, I agree with a lot of stuff they said, but like it pissed me off that nobody was ever challenging them. Yeah, you're just kind of like defend your point, fucker. Exactly. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, and yeah. then what they end up doing is just getting mad. And yeah. then I just got dogpiled. It was. I really got dragged, <laughs> but I didn't have a chance. No. It was one against 23. So sounds like every comment section on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Moving on. No. That's college in a nutshell. It's like fucking junior high debate in a nutshell, but there's no debating. That's the problem. There's you're, mm. you're so right. Tiffany, you were, <laughs> men are garbage. You were so right. <laughs> That's the debate. One hundred percent. Let's go get mimosas and go to Panera, Brad. <laughs> that was an awesome impression. <laughs> I was in college for a while, so um, <laughs> let's go make picket signs. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I I take the opposing view just to cause chaos because I th- I find chaos funny, but it's not i know you do you do it to me on purpose you constantly (laughs) sit there and fucking prod me you do it all the time but i need but we all gotta we gotta think about things too right i do do it to make you think i i don't believe half the things i say obviously but i mean if we're gonna start talking about well let's talk about it there's a lot of different things that people don't think about yeah absolutely just uh, just in general like parking a car you just do it automatically but there's a lot of things you've got to think about just to park your car you know anyways mm, i know let me ask you this what, what kind of questions were they that's a good question for this study because that's a, that's a big line. deal like is the ball red or blue or is it more like kind of 
uh, strat questions. It was always the same. Which line oh. is the same length as the first one? It was always oh. the same. So it's like a very cut and dry. Yes, it was. It was. There was a very obvious answer. The people who partook in it, they felt a lot of relief when they were debriefed because they were they were right all along. And, you know, not that knowing how long a line is, is much of a feat of intelligence, but it still gave them the same sense of like satisfaction as if, as you know, when it's like name the capital of all the states, right? And you're like yeah. super satisfied that you can do that. That is a feat of intelligence because there's so fucking many, I couldn't do it. I just always say Richmond. <laughs> there's like a chance you're going to get it right. Like, <laughs> I don't know what the capital of Kentucky is. Uh, Richmond. <laughs> now I know. Isn't that Virginia? Richmond's the capital of Virginia, isn't it? That's uh, about the only one I know. The capital of Kentucky is... Holy shit. I live here. <laughs> <laughs> Louisville. 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 It is Louisville. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Good to that know. That wasn't a bit. Just for everyone listening, that wasn't a bit. He, oh, he forgot. It was not a bit. <laughs> that wasn't a joke. He actually did not know. <laughs> what's, what's the capital of Minnesota? St. Paul. It's part of the Twin Cities of Minneapolis. Oh, St. Paul is also the capital of fucking New Brunswick, I think. I was getting ready to say that. Or is it Newfoundland? Help Newfoundland's me out, Richard. Newfoundland's a place. Newfoundland's another province. I know, uh, but is it yeah. St. John is the capital of one of those places? Hang on. It's St. Saint John's. Uh, I don't know. Canada, or, Ontario uh, is BC, Toronto. Edmonton, Alberta, Regina, Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Toronto. Is there a song for this shit? You go back. St. John's. Newfoundland. Yeah, it's Newfoundland. Stupid, <laughs> I, mean, I had a stupid puzzle that like had this sh- state shape and then you picked it up and then inside was the capital and i only know the state i live in because i went to school there <laughs> i know the whole greek alphabet <laughs> is this from like uh your military times like why do you know that i don't know why i know it <laughs> okay i don't remember where i learned it it's alpha beta gamma delta epsilon zeta eta theta iota kappa lambda mu nu zi omicron pyro sigma tau epsilon phi chi psi omega i i don't remember wow. where i learned that what the fuck is that? What did you just say? The, the Greek alphabet. Uh, <laughs> is that 26 is this... letters? Something like that. No. Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak the regular alphabet and phonetics. Do the whole it. damn thing. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Echo, Delta, Golf, Foxtrot, whatever the fuck is next. <laughs> Lima. A, B, C, D, E, F. No, G. G. Golf. Gary. Golf. Golf. Gary, H. Gary H is next. Gary. Hotel. Gary. India. Georgie. Juliet. Blah, blah, blah. Juliet and Romeo are my favorite because I'm like, hey, everyone knows Shakespeare. <laughs> That's true. Well, and- we've only got five states and two territories, so it's pretty easy <laughs> to remember the capitals. <laughs> is that true? Kangarooville. Sloth Town. Yeah, Kangarooville. Emu Town. <laughs> Tasmania, incest island. There so go. Uh, I got a question for Christy. How come you think that you would mm. fold to this? Like, is it just your personality yeah. or do you feel like you just, you don't like, uh, what is it like? You don't like people arguing or whatever? You just agree so everyone should. No, I probably would just, I would probably just end up agreeing because I'm sick of listening to people bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree because I want to be liked. In my mind, I would know that I would be right. I do it all the time. Like I do it all the time now. Like I'm just, someone will say something and they're just like, yeah, so the sky's purple. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, the sky's not fucking purple, you idiot. But I'll just be like, mm-hmm. Aww. And I'll just let, I'll just let people continue talking because a lot of the times people don't give a fuck what my opinion is. So I'm just like, you know what? If you want to think the sky's purple, then that's completely fine. You think it's pur- it's purple? Well, excuse me. I'm getting I'm I'm getting worked up talking about. <laughs> She's so cross. Yeah, I'm getting so fuck fucking you. Cross it's now. purple. <laughs> they didn't discuss this. Like this, the they didn't talk to each other about this. They just sat in a line, and the subject of interest was always at the end of the line, and it was just one by one. Ask you, 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 you. Oh no! If it's like that, if there's no discussion between people, I would have been like. No, it's A. The line, the the line it is A. 
just feel like I would be like looking down the line. Yeah, yeah do they look smarter than me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one's got glasses. Oh, fuck. I just feel like, yeah, and they wouldn't look back at you because they're trying to keep a straight face. So I'd be yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay. I see what you fuckers. <laughs> I feel like I could figure it out. Like, oh, okay. I see what's, yeah, the line. Okay. Where is Ashton Kutcher? Am Where I getting is he punked? at? Where is he at? <laughs> Um, the big unethical no-no in this one was just simply that they were deceived as to why they were there. That is not allowed in research mm-hmm. any longer. Everyone has to have informed consent. Um, so mm-hmm. the other thing that I actually was going to bring up when you were talking about TikTok challenge is, do you guys remember the Facebook video? This would have been a few years ago, and it was a bunch of actors sitting in a laundromat. And then an actual patron comes into the laundromat and sits down and he's waiting for his laundry. And then like a bong sound would go off and everyone would stand up and the patron would be like (laughs) i've got to look this up the fuck it's so good (laughs) darren brown does a oh yeah it there it's the one that he does is like they're all waiting for like an interview or something and they're all sitting there filling out forms and but they're all in on it and one person comes in and um there's like a beep yeah like a you know like an elevator ding or something and they stand up and then it dings again and they sit down. And then before you know it, this person that, that isn't in on it is doing the same thing. Yeah. And then they send another person in and then that person's like, what the fuck's going on? And then they start standing up as well. And before you know it, you've got this whole room full of people that have no idea what's going on, but they're all standing up and sitting down at the, at, as it's beeping. It's absolutely, it's insane. I've seen a video like that before where though they have elevator doors open up and everybody's standing in the elevator is facing towards the back instead yep. of the front. And they see if yes. the person will, and they're always like. We'll stand. Yep. I know. <laughs> have you guys seen the one it's a- where it's like a car dealership or not a car dealership, but a car like auto repair or whatever. And then there's people, you know, there's the actor sitting in and then one patron and um they they like someone just comes in and they're like you want a prize to so the patron and then all of the other people just stare at him the rest of the time and he gets so freaked the fuck out he just leaves he doesn't even get his prize he just leaves like no eyes freak people out well we're all we're all weirdly from a per- performance side of things like this is what you want an audience to be like it all in sync not thinking about what they're doing exactly except for like paying attention to the one thing and that's it's we're all connected in a weird way like that and watching a group of people stand up it's the same thing as making people laugh you get everyone laughing you could say whatever you want at a certain point yes you can if you have the crowd in in stitches you can just say whatever and they're just gonna laugh because that's what they're right now everyone's doing and it's just part of it whether it's hilarious or not it's a a group mind mentality with performance is what that is that standing up and sitting down thing is just like everyone we all are a group now i want to be together with the group so we're with the group i don't care what they're doing it's nope bye you've gotten into it whether you know it or not, Tally, this has happened to you before. Uh, it's oh, just for sure. Where, yeah, I laugh yeah. with you guys, even when I'm like, that wasn't very funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is all making me think, though. This isn't a social experiment, but there's a uh, a practical joke I've seen where they, they had a porta shitter and uh, I don't even know where it was, but they had this like makeshift business meeting room. And they would wait for a stranger to go just walking down the sidewalk to go into the poor shitter. And while they were in there, they would move this business room over in front of it <laughs> so that the door to the poor shitter just opened into a business room. And they had like 12 people that would run in in suits and sit down in the chairs and they would be putting at numbers on the screen and everything. So they would go into shit. But whenever they would come out, they would just walk out into a business meeting and they would oh, everyone sorry. they would be like. And then everybody in the business meeting would just stop and look at them like they're they're the one that's like weird here. And Aww. half of them would turn around and go back into the porta shitter and just wait. It's hot there. <laughs> God, most of this shit just makes me feel sad. I'm like, oh, poor bastard. Yeah. yeah. So you know, conformity, right? It's gross. It's disgusting. Don't do it. Powerful thing. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Don't get sober and don't conform. Okay, so the uh, 
that Facebook experiment was influenced by the the ash conformity experiments so there you go so it's still like a modern thing that people are doing but ash was also highly influential to another blossoming researcher by the name of stanley milgram okay and his research laid the groundwork pardon me ash's research laid the groundwork for milgram's obedience study so we're going to bring a little bit of heat in here now in 1960, Stanley Milgram created an, ex an experiment where two participants would be brought in together and they would sit together in a room and then they would be assigned a role of either a teacher or a learner. And they would be assigned these roles by picking them out of a hat. However, one of them was an actor. And in fact, both slips in the hat said teacher. So regardless, the actor would say, oh, I picked learner. Doesn't matter, right? They were told that they were studying memory and learning and the effects of punishment on memory. They were also paid for their contribution, and they were told that they would be paid regardless of whether or not the experiment ended early. So that was the pre-explanation before the experiment got started. The learner and the teacher would be taken into separate rooms that share a wall. So they shared a wall and they could communicate with each other, but they couldn't see each other. The teacher would be told by the experimenter, that's the person who's running the study, and this person would hover over their shoulder the entire course of the experiment as well. They would tell the teacher that the learner was on the other side of the wall, hooked up to a chair that would deliver electrical shocks anytime they got the answer wrong. So the teacher's job was to read out a list of paired words, and they were just random words, right? It would be like, apple spider um ball elephant so on so forth and it was a list of them okay and then they would ask the learner they'd give them the first word they'd then give them four possible words that could have been the pair word and then if the learner got it wrong they had to deliver an electric shock okay there were 30 levels of shocks that could be used against the learner each shock was clearly labeled based on intensity and there were warnings printed clearly on the higher levels the shocks ranged from 15 volts to 450 volts, which is an amount that could absolutely kill you. There were no shocks. I assume people know, like, assume this already, but there were no shocks. Mm -hmm. The learner was just acting. He just stood in a room and all he did was say answers. Anything that came that wasn't a wrong answer was a pre-recorded shock and reaction sound effect. Okay. And it was the same for every participant in the study. They all heard the exact same series of pre-recorded messages. They were triggered when the buttons were pushed on the dashboard in front of the teacher. So in the early levels of the shocks, there would be very subtle reactions. There would be like a damn it or like an ouch. But as the shocks increased, there would be banging on the wall. There would be screaming. There would be the voice saying, please stop. The voice saying, I have a heart condition. And so on and so forth over the course of all these shocks. And in the last few voltages of the intensity, there was no pre-recorded message. It was just silence. Unfortunately, not answering at all was also a wrong answer. And so the teacher had to deliver the next shock. So if the teacher became too nervous to continue with the study, the experimenter would use four scripted prods and they would use them in this order. One would be an answer to whatever their, object, their objection was. And then they would say, please go on. Two, the experiment requires that you continue. Three, it is absolutely essential that you continue. And four, you have no other choice. You must go on. So the scripted assurances were, although shocks may be painful, there is no permanent tissue damage. Or whether the learner likes it or not, you have to continue with the experiment, okay? If after the fourth prod, the teacher still protested, the experiment was ended. And if the teacher went on, the experiment ended at 450 volt shock intensity. Wow, it was like a lightning bolt, right? You know, I don't know exactly. I just know that it could absolutely kill you. Yeah, getting electrocuted sucks. Uh, yeah. You ever it get does. a good one? You ever get a good one where you're yes. like stuck to it? It's not good. 
somebody has to like push you off with a stick not good yeah but they yeah but it has to be like rubber like or you know wood, what i yeah. mean it can't like a, yeah, oh, it can't wood be metal. too yeah wood yeah but what about like a rake with with metal on the end would it conduct to not, back to you not if you're touching the wood part hmm. Hmm. good to know good to know <laughs> just in i'll case put that in my notes stuck on yeah i w- fuck man that's so uh imagine like feeling like you need to do that it's so bad <laughs> one time i had hair down to my waist and i it was i had like one of them wet to wet to straight straighteners and i plugged it in and like a piece of my hair was in the prongs and i shocked myself to the skull it was nuts <laughs> i'd do it again <laughs> fair enough <laughs> I feel like this is explaining a lot of things, actually. <laughs> How many times did I've you I've also <laughs> I've also knocked myself out on three separate occasions. Before before or after occasions. the electrocution. Some before, some after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nuts. I have no idea how this shit happens to me. What percentage of people made it to 450 volts? I will tell you. Okay. When all was said and done, 26 out of 40 participants administered every level of shock. yes people are dumb and every single one went higher than 300 there's video of this right like there's there's video of this because i've seen this before Mm -hmm. yes people are fucking crazy man how much money were they getting did we do we know that they were college students it was probably like 11 (laughs) dollars it was not much i think i think it was about 30 dollars for the day (laughs) to electrocute someone to death like how fucked are you you must be like well they were assured that it wasn't going to harm them but you know and obviously no one did die so they actually experienced a ton of symptoms of distress the participants um they ranged from ticks cringes flinches groans trembling and self-harming such as biting their lips or pinching themselves and one participant actually had a full-blown seizure from the stress. Oh, my God. And there were 14 instances of unexplained, uncontrollable nervous laughter. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm picturing the grown guy, too, like, <laughs> No, I don't like that. I, I don't That's either. That's too many. Yeah. Do you have recordings? Do you have, do you have the audio of, of what it sounded like? What they could hear the feedback from pushing the shock buttons uh i don't have them on hand they're all on youtube you can find them all up there i'm just curious i'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to figure out how i would react and i would need to hear these it's very realistic first. it's it actors. is realistic just imagine a man absolutely screaming his fucking head off because he was sure he was gonna die just imagine that and saying i have oh. a heart condition and you crank it to 400 like the first time I got a tattoo, I asked the artist, I'm like, hey, is your job weird? And he's like, I enjoy it. And I'm like, well, it, it, isn't that a little weird because like you're inflicting pain on others? And he's like, wow, I've never thought of it that way. Yeah. Me and Christy actually <laughs> talked about that a little bit in our most recent um, Patreon exclusive episode. We yes, were yes. talking about how dermatologists, I was specifically talking about how dermatologists oh. can like, cut someone's skin while they're awake and talking to them and literally just like dig around inside their skin and that oh, but they get lidocaine out. shots first it doesn't matter it still freaks me out to watch that oh they yeah can yeah do it yeah so gross right. i cried when i got a tooth pulled because i had a wisdom tooth coming in oh my god i cried i've never had anything like that happen before in my life it was just the crunching it's yeah, like it's corn in the cob high. breaking in half yeah yeah, yeah. ew oh, oh that is the sound. like perfect perfect description and it's so much pressure mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they use tools that are come out of like a a tackle box. And the dentist was my <laughs> pretty much my grandpa. The same <laughs> tools that they use to take wisdom teeth out is like the same thing you need to change a transmission on like a seventy three <laughs> Delta. <laughs> yeah. Like it's the same thing. Oh. And they yeah. literally tell you they're like, okay, we're gonna break your tooth in half and then pull it out in pieces. Mm-hmm. Thank you. They're fucking standing on your chest. Literally. <laughs> That's what the Russian lady who did mine did. I'm not even joking. She was on my chest. Like my dentist is Russian and mean too. Yeah. My dentist is Canadian. He's yeah. brilliant. I love him actually. And now his son is taking over and I love him too. He's, I don't mind looking up, you know, whatever. Sorry, James. Don't worry about all this drool in here. I always drool that much. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot in here, isn't it? 
just sitting there drooling and he's like don't worry that numbness will wear off in a few hours like what numbness what numbness dude <laughs> oh here here let me right? let me dab your face <laughs> it's like oh my god <laughs> i haven't been to a dentist since 2013 really that wow you have such such a white smile you have lovely teeth i got a big front gap you could park a buick between the front of my, my <laughs> upper two teeth but nice. i mean they're white and they're all there they're present there you go so. that's all you need fuck gaps you're a good looking dude man mm-hmm. i got the dad i got the dad thing going on now but yeah I'm, okay. I'm 34 I like years dads. old dad, oh. i like dads i married a dad i won't say dads in general i like the dad bod i like a man who i know will crush tacos with me if i ask him to i just oh. yeah i will fuck a taco up <laughs> dude I'll put a taco bell out of business dude same I, oh Okay, those tacos. I'm tacos for dinner now am i right i'm sure you are christy <laughs> <laughs> yeah you'll go to town on a taco tonight won't you <laughs> hard shell always Just you eat the win. hard shell over a tortilla and then you make yourself a sauce oh shell. that's genius my yep. italian brother-in-law is that it's so funny i let it fall and then i have tortilla chips and then i just yes. make like a oh, i just dip what whatever I falls like yeah, nacho salad like nachos just as yeah. good yeah 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 how about you Richard? No how do you take your tacos i just smash my face Moist? and move and do the alphabet yeah, <laughs> yeah you do <laughs> Uh, I was waiting. I was like, they're going to ask me. They're going to ask me. They're going to ask me. They asked me. I liked it. <laughs> oh, my God. I say, I say B a lot. Just <gasps> <laughs> I get stuck on B. I'm like a motorboat. <laughs> I just learned how long James can hold his breath because we've got a hot tub. Uh- <laughs> I'm going to go. He probably went fucking Good. Aquaman on that shit. My <laughs> 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 fun fact about hot tubs. Did you know that hot tubs cause uh, this? And I always think about this when I get in one at like a motel or something like a public hot tub. And I'm sorry if I'm going to really ruin the romance of a hot tub. But because of the nature of a hot tub, it causes anybody that gets inside to relax their anus and juices from their ass get into the water. So when you're getting into a hot tub, you're really just getting into whoever's in that hot tub, their ass juice because uh, mm-hmm. their anus. Rel- it's like a natural human reaction. To no way. Tub. Yeah. Have you ever got in a hot tub at, a, at like a motel and there's like a little foam at the top? Ew, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> whenever I grew up on a farm. Ah. Uh... Uh-uh. I used to play in the creeks all the time and there would be foam on top of the creek water. One time I asked my uncle, I was like, what is that that I'm that that uh, that I keep playing in there? And it's like, that's where the cows shit and piss. And it's the foam off of their shit and piss. And I've always suspected that the foam that's in a hot tub is the ass juice coming to the surface, uh, like a frothy ass juice that forms oh. in a layer at the top of the hot tub. <laughs> and that's what that is. That's like getting stuck in your Fucking <laughs> chest while you're sitting back and it's oh. your boyfriend sitting there and it's in his beard it's just ass juice froth it's froth it's ass froth dude i gotta get so, a hot tub I, oh. <laughs> that that was a selling point you know i'm always down for some anal cleansing well i mean it's just if it's just your all's ass juices it's not like a big deal but it, it is gross in like motels i won't get in a yeah. hot tub in motels yeah, when there's hundreds of people in it. No. Yeah, but you can uh, get like fucking gangrene from a motel hot tub, which yeah. I like. But you I mean, can't get herpes. I didn't. So what? So you can't get herpes <laughs> twice. You can't get herpes twice. You can't get it twice. You can't get it twice. <laughs> Just once. No, because you once you've got it, you can't get rid of it. Oh, once right. you've got it, you've got it for life, man. I yeah. thought. Yeah, I thought it was like uh, once you get it, you just give it to somebody else, and then it's like you pass it on. We're good to go. <laughs> It's like that movie following. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> oh god. Tag your it, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> now I have to fuck someone else by midnight. Yeah. Or my dick gets sore. <laughs> hey, it follows was a really good movie, too. It was. Yes, it follows. Thank it you. Follows yes. It was so yeah. good. It was good. It was no. Such a good movie. I like that movie. You didn't like it? No. 
when that uh, big yeah. dude comes down the hallway out of nowhere whenever it's just like they're sitting there having a conversation and this monster he's like nine foot fucking tall. under the fucking door oh yeah yeah Hell i'd yeah. like nearly shit myself and i was in a hot tub too so. it. it follows was a good movie and i'll die on that hill die with you i'm right there with you bud i remember a car that gets steamy but i might be thinking of titanic yeah, that's because that's on the case tally <laughs> <laughs> literally Tally's that's literally the post an inch away from pulling out a penny fact just to throw you over the fucking edge <laughs> <laughs> well i heard that if you're in new zealand and you find a penny and pick it up you have a good day you have good luck all day did you know that every fact that he tells on that show penny fact is true you can look no, them up for sure. i know yeah. not no doubt do you give him the dates in advance yeah. or does he actually no, just no, have every no. date? A lot already? of that, probably half of them, true, real story, half of those are pulled out of his ass in the moment. He gets the script for a TCK episode about 10 minutes before we start to record. Did you know that a pot of gold is actually a pot of pennies? So, um... Yeah, okay, so the Milgram study, all the blatant ethical violations were not ignored even then uh, because the participants were deceived and they experienced a ton of psychological damage as well as some of them even physiological damage, as I mentioned. So they were told initially in passing, as I said, that they were free to end the experiment any time, but every indication afterwards was that they were not free to do anything except continue. So... This study was actually replicated as recently as 2017 in Poland, and the results haven't changed. People aren't, as much as we want to believe we are, people aren't any more woke now than they were then. So um, the results of this study have actually been used quite frequently and effectively in the legality of war crimes. More like most frequently, of course, the Nazi hive mind, how they could do the horrible things that they were doing to other people when they themselves were just people, yeah. right? So speaking of obedience, from the Milgram study was born the Stanford Prison Experiment, okay? And the Stanford Prison Experiment is gonna give you the kind of heartburn that makes you want to die. Uh, for the listeners, this might actually be one you're the most familiar with. There was a dramatized film adaptation that was released in 2015, and that film was actually highly regarded. The movie's well done, yeah. Okay. Well, in August of 1971, Stanford psychology professor Philip Zimbardo spearheaded what would have been a two-week simulation of the prison experience. His goal was to see the psychological effects of being both a prisoner and a guard in a prison. So I can see the intrigue here, but I can't see the purpose. He never presented like hopes of this being used to improve safety for the guards or efficacy for the prisoners. He just wanted to see. So the study was advertised as a job in the local want ads in the newspaper. A total of 24 male applicants were selected to take part in the two-week prison simulation, and they were selected based on how psychologically stable and healthy they were. They were offered $15 a day, which was no slouch, by the way, in 1971. That was about 100 bucks a day. And the conditions were that no one with a criminal background, mental illness, or medical issues could take part. The experiment was conducted in the basement of Stanford Psychology Building, and great measures were taken to make it feel and look like a real prison. And great as great as they could be. I mean, they built like legitimate cells that like you could escape from and shit. But at the same time, um, isolation was a closet and their yard was a hallway. You know what I mean? The guards were given instructions before the study not to harm the prisoners or withhold rations, okay? So they were all given uniforms, wooden batons, which they weren't supposed to use. This was just a status symbol and not a tool. And they were all given mirrored sunglasses and they gave them those to encourage anonymity, right? They're all dressed the same. You can't see their eyes. It was supposed to make them figures and not people. They gave them a fake mustache. <laughs> this was the seventies. Yeah. They already had mustaches. I was going to say that if you all look like Burt Reynolds, uh, people will, well, Burt Reynolds with a stick, people will respect you. Now he's the country singer, right? No, darling. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he was a football player. Oh, I love hockey. I hope he gets a goal. 
I hope he shoots a basket. All right. <laughs> anyway. Oh, he was an actor. <laughs> <laughs> and Christy falls for it. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you just got operator. Um, the guy that sings with Dolly Parton. Roger. That's Kenny Rogers. Roger Kenny. <laughs> Roger Kenny's. <laughs> Sounds like he sells Chevrolets at a at a fucking Toyota dealership. <laughs> Come on down to Roger Kenny's. Come on down to Roger Kenny's. <laughs> Got no when says when it, fuck. hold them. No, no when, when to fold them. them. No when no to when walk, walk away. away. No, no when, when to run. run. God damn, that's a good song. That's Kenny. That's Roger Kenny's. Yes. Yes, yes. darling. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Put me on trivia. It's time to go on trivia. So they all had mustaches, sideburns, etc. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they were instructed to use boredom, lack of privacy, and their position of power as a means to make the prisoners unhappy. The goal in this study, and it is explicitly stated that you want the prisoners to feel powerless and miserable. Much like a guard. Kind of. A little bit. So the prisoners were given smocks with numbers on them. And Zimbardo called these smocks their dresses. The caps that they wore were made from women's nylons and it was to simulate the shaven head of a prisoner. They were also given rubber sandals and a chain that had to be worn around their ankle at all times. And that is literally it. They were free balling it under their dress. Wow. Um, Zimbardo gave them these Uh, accessories whatever that he gave them because he wanted to speed up the feeling of emasculation and humiliation that prisoners feel and because it was a short time frame this was the best way to make that happen quickly Uh, the guards were told only to use the numbers to identify the prisoners so in true dramatic fashion before the experiment started the prisoners were arrested at their homes by real police officers by the way The police force also took the volunteers in for fingerprinting, mugshots, delousing, and strip searches. And then they were marched into their cells in the basement of the Stanford Psychology Building. Each cell held three prisoners, and these roles were split evenly and randomly, and they were given just a cot each. And that was all that was in their cells. And they spent 24 hours a day confined within their cells. Um, or at least that was the standard was to be confined for 24 hours a day. Things changed. So there was also a closet that was designated for solitary confinement. And this was before the experiment started. So that was a tool that was offered to the guards already. And there was also a small corridor, which they called the prison yard. And that ended up being a reward for prisoners who were obedient. So the guards worked in eight hour shifts and it was three guards per shift. And the guards were given comfortable areas to rest and relax, and they were allowed to go home when their shift was done, but the prisoners stayed in the prison at all times. There were nine prisoners and nine guards, and each group had three substitutes so that the experiment could continue if someone had to abandon it. Zimbardo acted as the superintendent, and then one of his undergrad students took on the role of the warden. Any questions, concerns, thoughts before we get into what happened? um did they get paid the same the guards and the uh prisoners do you know my thought i looked it up too because i was like if they're there 24 hours a day they should get more pay yeah nope same, same across thing. the board oh, that sucks. did they did they pick to be uh i already know the answer to this but did they pick whether they wanted to be a guard or a prisoner before they started or did they just go like randomized take 18 people and went you like picking a baseball team you know and you go like I want him on my team with the guards or like, how do they pick who, what, what? Uh, it was random selection. I assume because of the technology then it was literally just picking names out of a hat kind of thing. Um, that being said, there were actually people who did specifically request roles, including prisoner. There was people who did actually want to be a prisoner and their requests were irrelevant. I feel like Zimbardo had an inkling of what he was getting into because he assigned uniforms to both. Like, why not put one in plain clothes? It was supposed to simulate the prison. Yeah. I feel like he knew what he was doing. He just mm-hmm. wanted to see. And how are you going to know except to make it as realistic as possible? And, yeah. like, when they went in there, were they prisoners? Like, did they do, like, the perp walk thing into the cells? The whole shebang that way? or? Yeah. They walked him in butt naked. 
Did they have to squat, turn their head, and cough? Yes, they did. They did all. Wow. I did that room. once. I used to have to do that all the time to inmates. It was the worst part of the job. Oh. Tell us about that. Yeah, tell, tell us, us some more. I was wait. You nothing else. That's it. <laughs> no. <laughs> if you've seen one asshole, you've seen them all. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Did anything interesting ever fall out? <laughs> no, I never really found anything interesting. It was. And the worst part was I I had to strip search and do the turnover, bend over and cough thing to like the work release guys. So they would go out, they would go out and weed eat and mow in like a oh. hundred degree weather for, for oh. 12 hours. You got the swast draft. Yeah. And then, and there'd be like 65 year old dudes that have been doing meth for 40 years. And then you have to look at their asshole with a flashlight because you can't just look at it. You got to take a flashlight. <gasps> so it's like, I'm not enjoying this any <laughs> more than you are, guy. Like, look, I'm as interested in anuses as the, as the next person, but I actually meant tell us a little bit about being a prison guard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Celeste is an alien. Uh, probing is where it's at. That's all I'll say on the matter. <laughs> you know, all those assholes, I never saw anything interesting not once they pretty much all look the same they do they do mm. they do I, I lose sleep sometimes to this day lots of anal juices and no hot tub i may have lost more of myself doing that job than i did in that trailer when i was 11 years old that's that's how <laughs> traumatizing that was it was, it was so mad if i never go back in my hot tub that i just got oh. <laughs> i'm sorry i should have told you that uh. If you and your boyfriend will just clinch the whole time you're in it, clinch. You just got to clinch. Don't breathe. <laughs> so anything else about being a prison guard that doesn't have to do with, okay, I know a lot of it is buttholes, but like anything? One time it, uh, one time one of the inmates started a fire. And do you mean just in general or like weird things that stand no, out? No, like head? what was like, I want to know what it was like to be a prison guard, like your day to day. There's not really a day to day because you might come in on one shift and there's a guy tied up in a chair, restrained, spitting on everybody and calling and telling you they're going to kill you and your family. And, and you might come in the next day and it's just quiet and nothing's going on. That's kind of what I liked about it. You never yeah. really knew when shit was going to go down and when shit goes down it really goes down like Kept you, know. you on your on your toes and it was kind of fun it was exciting but that got I, I did it for about four years and uh and after about two years it got old it, it got to the point where like you know the first two years somebody's kicking a door they're kicking because if they want to fight they'll start kicking their cell they call it being on the door to start kicking the door they're ready to fight and it's like all right well you put your gloves on like okay he's he's they get bored that's what it is and I get it. So we'll, and, but they're not going to win. Like, even if you whoop my ass, there's three other guards that are just going to, you know what I mean? Like you're not going to win, uh, but they just get bored. So for the first two years, that was exciting. You would hear a foot hit the door and you're like, uh Oh, we're things are getting ready to get fun. It's going to get fun. But after two years, people start kicking the door and you're like, ah, come on, Larry. <laughs> trying to enjoy my go girl you fucker Larry, let's not do this <laughs> let's not do this let's have a good shift let's just keep it quiet you don't want to do this i don't want to do this mm. you're not going to win we have weapons larry I'm like yeah trying to eat your larry, larry does want to do it larry <laughs> does want to do it he does and it's because i mean what else does he have to do he doesn't have and some of the guys don't have anything to lose the only thing i did enjoy uh the entire four years was when pedophiles would get their fucking heads caved in mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed that a lot yeah okay 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 we're gonna we gotta get through this because we still have to do the second episode i'm actually really enjoying this you want to stay for part two no not oh. that much no uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um the first day of the simulation was mostly just the groups becoming acquainted with their roles so after this first day, the guards were taken aside and they were offered some new information. And this was information that the prisoners were not involved in the presentation of, okay? So they were told that they weren't tough enough. They needed to be tougher and evoke more fear. 
So according to Dave Eshelman, and he was a man who became quite the subject of scrutiny when the experiment was over because his performance as a guard was particularly sadistic. So he said the guards were essentially told that they were not part of the experiment. They were the actors. They were the Confederates. They were there so that Zimbardo could study the prisoners under the conditions that he wanted. So the guards, they could hear the experimenters commenting on what was going on, and they would hear the reactions, either favorable or unfavorable, towards their behavior. And so the experimenters naturally had the loudest response to emotional brutality, right? They would say things like, did you see that? Did you get that shot? Move in closer, things like that. So a major bias was introduced at this point in the form of feedback to the guards. On day two, three prisoners in one of the cell blocks used their beds to block the door to their cell. They removed their prisoner caps, which was not allowed, and they refused to abide by the guards. So other guards from other ships were brought in to handle the tiny little prison riot, and they were only subdued after the guards attacked them with fire extinguishers, which they got from just around the university. This wasn't part of the experiment. So the guards decided that to maintain order with only three guards and nine prisoners, they were going to have to get a little creative. They implemented the prisoner reward system. They started by giving the prisoners who stayed out of the riot a higher quality dinner and a few other little creature comforts. But the inmates who qualified rejected this meal and anything else, and they stood in commiseration with their fellow prisoners. So during the course of day two, one of the prisoners actually had a breakdown. He started screaming, cursing, and destroying the property, and he was released, and the experiment continued with a replacement. So over the next few days, some of the guards got even more creative. Some of them are really humane and quite fair, but the more sadistic ones, they wouldn't allow prisoners to relieve themselves anywhere but in a bucket in their cell. And if they, had a pr if they had a problem with this, they weren't allowed to empty the bucket. Uh, during the prisoner counts, the guards would start to force the prisoners to repeat their numbers. And if any of the prisoners made an error in their number, they would be forced to do push-ups or sit-ups or some other kind of physical strain. Uh, the guards used this as a tool to ingrain the new number identity into the prisoner so that they would stop using their names. They would also take away prison mattresses as punishment for disobedience and force them to sleep on the ground. And if they continued to act up, they would force them to strip completely naked and they would have to sleep naked on the concrete. Uh, there was actually even a prison break plot at one point in the experiment. There were rumors that were circulating that the prisoner who had the breakdown and was released, he actually planned to return with his friends to release the remaining prisoners. But Zavardo got word of this and he decided that he was going to take apart the basement prison and set it back up on another floor. And that way, when they arrived, he could just say, well, the prison experiment ended early. But they actually never showed up and the prison was rebuilt in the basement. So prisoners began full rule absorption within four days. The no violence rule was broken on day two with the fire extinguishers and the guards were never reprimanded. And so they felt completely helpless at this point. They were trapped like the science rats, right? So one of the prisoners actually proposed to the warden, that was the undergrad student, that he would apply for parole. And that would be he would go through a parole process. And if he was granted parole, he would forfeit his pay for the experiment. And every single one of them had the right to quit the experiment. Yes, they would get some resistance probably, but they could leave. There was actually nothing stopping them from leaving. But the guards had them brainwashed so effectively that rather than walk out in this situation where he's face to face with the warden in the warden's office or whatever, that he asked for parole and went, was willing to go through the three-day process or whatever, okay? So a new prisoner was actually introduced midway through the experiment. Um, and he wasn't beaten down on the same timeline as the other prisoners. And so he was immediately concerned about the well-being of all of the other prisoners. So he actually decided that he was going to have a hunger strike against the conditions in the prison. 
And he was punished by being put in solitary confinement, which was the closet. And the other prisoners were told that they were to stand outside the door, bang on it and scream at prisoner 416. That was his number. And this was what they were supposed to do with their yard time. And they would be rewarded if they did this task. And they did because they were entirely submissive to the guards after only 96 hours. But that being said, the prisoners actually supported each other and stood up for each other quite often. And that is usually how they caught punishments in the first place. So the experiment was officially halted after only six days because Zimbardo's girlfriend, who, by the way, was a grad student, which is yucky. Uh, she came in to do some interviews and told Zimbardo that she didn't like the experiment. And she was actually the only one out of more than 50 people who came in to observe that objected. So the experiment was totally raked for being incredibly unethical, right? The selection process was very biased because it takes a certain kind of person to respond to an ad looking for a prison experiment experience. And it was reflected in the psychological tests that the participants took that it was a certain kind of people. They all scored highly in aggression, authoritarianism, Machiavellianism, narcissism, social dominance, and scored low on empathy and altruism. Naturally. Again, any thoughts? Yeah, it only took concerned? two days for them to break down into a riot. That's, that's crazy to me. And then after the riot, okay, I got questions. So after the riot, and then they got sprayed with the fire extinguisher, okay? And then after that, they were scared enough to just, like, be strip searched and shit without being like, get the fuck out of here. This is, like, experiment. I'm not going to take my clothes off and live on the floor. Like, they were, after that riot, that's when they became, like, subservient, basically. That's crazy to me. About day four is when they were completely, almost completely obedient. And the first guy they put in solitary was the, the new guy that came in? They'd used solitary confinement before, okay. but it was just a timeout, basically. I gotcha. And I guess solitary confinement is like the worst, like humane punishment used on humans. I'd rather be tortured. Yeah. I would too. I'd rather have each finger cut off a day. Yeah. I know myself too well to want to be alone with me. I would be just fine. <laughs> I can't think of anybody else to be worse to be stuck with. <laughs> <laughs> my friend has a than, my, than me yeah my friend has a float tank and he's like he like that's his business he's like you should come and float i'm like i'm good he's like it'll expand your mind i'm like i don't want to know what's going on in there i have enough no. i have enough knowing you have you have a tank where i could shriek it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> you have a tank that's big and just makes a lot of noise what's a float tank joe rogan's a big advocate. sensory deprivation sensory deprivation that's what it is yeah and you float in like salt water and no sound no light nothing you're just floating there as if nothing the water is is heated to i think it's like 98 degrees yeah, <laughs> yeah i've done i've done one once and i hated it's it heated? i hated every second yeah it's warm oh they're full of ass juice it's, yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be the same temperature as your skin so does it feel like you're like laying on nothing go yeah, the goal is to feel like you're floating. I don't yeah, like that's, it. That's the point. So you're supposed to feel like you're floating in a completely in a completely uh, soundless chamber. Yeah, and it's dark. I don't like it. I, yeah, I hated it. it the, the intention is to kill all your senses. Yeah, sensory deprivation. But I'm chamber. I'm such a sensory person. Like I love heavy silverware. I love playing with joysticks. But it's supposed to make you go button inward, smashing. Right? Mm. yeah it's supposed to be like floating in space it's yeah. supposed to be like an uh on an un 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 irrelevant irre irrelevant fact space smells like rotten eggs what yeah oh. it's a true fact oh i'm so sad <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. i'm gonna pretend it smells very crisp now you know that hot tubs are full of ass juice and and space smells like rotten eggs. Oh, Tally. I've really doing great things, and I'm sorry. You guys are crushing my dreams. <laughs> you should write a book, Kent. And the guy that played Barney originally fucking killed himself with a shotgun. That's also true. 
this is better than ops penny facts honestly i want more Kent facts. <laughs> yeah, you should you should we come a in. million of that them. would be hilarious you should come in with the most brutal fucking fact just to blow his mind that would be hilarious actually yeah. kent's dream crushes <laughs> anyways uh what else do i have more questions um so yeah oh you said there's 50 people that came in and out of this place and only his girlfriend's the one who stopped him pussy's pretty strong but like what else are these fucking 50 people doing who are these 50 people like the dean like did the actual fucking stanford dean come down like the real not just his girlfriend okay but did like real researchers come down you know what i mean uh this probably would have been mostly students who were writing about it oh god even crazy even weirder like look what i'm mm. doing you could have been a part of this for 90 dollars a day <laughs> were there any lasting effects from this experiment I mean, long term, not a whole lot. It's a, more social. The guards, they still receive hate mail and things like that. I'm talking about psychologically. Not really. Afterwards, like after debriefing and things like that, there was like a lot of stress. And But they also had opportunities to talk, discuss, remind themselves that the students were like all people, even though what they did was super fucked up, but they kind of explained to them a little bit the, their psychological research behind it. They talked to them about obedience and conformity and things like that. And so, I mean, overall, no, none of them ever, at least as far as have come out. I mean, they don't talk about that they're still scarred from being involved in this experiment. They're all probably in prison. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they went to a room uh, the last thing they remember is talking to some professor and they woke up playing baseball. Who knows? Maybe they don't even remember it. Yeah. <laughs> that shit happens. That happens. <laughs> well, okay. There's just a couple more things here. The experiment went on to stimulate a wealth of research into the theory of cognitive dissonance and as well as obedience. So the theory of cognitive dissonance is that in periods of great stress, people will react in ways that are unrepresentative of their true nature and characteristics. So someone who is strong and confident instead of standing up and saying no will shrivel under authority. Bullshit. It's, 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 it's true. Elaborate. <laughs> well, this one time I was in first grade. So what was I seven? I was seven. And teachers were trying to tell me that I was holding my pencil wrong, holding it with my ring finger. And they were like, no, you're holding your pencil. My teacher, she was like, you're holding your pencil wrong. And I'm like, how do you know? And she's like, because you're supposed to hold it with your middle finger against it. And I'm like, Trey isn't holding his pencil the same way as Sarah. And Sarah doesn't hold her pencil the same way as you. And then they tried to make me put this triangle grip on my pencil to mm -hmm. like force me to write the quote unquote correct way. And I was like, no, not doing it. Fuck off. I'm seven. Mm. <laughs> That's a little <laughs> bit different than having all of your like human rights violated, but yeah. Yeah, tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Fucking Leonardo DiCaprio, Leonardo da Vinci, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Same diff. <laughs> you know, know the teenage mutant ninja turtle but then you know just you know all sorts of peer pressure bullshit i'm like nah i'm not gonna do it you know mm -hmm. and just the ridicule that comes along with that i'm like yeah, i'll just watch you do it well most <laughs> you know most people didn't conform in these studies so the cognitive dissonance thing is just periods of like literally extreme stress sure. so Anyway, this uh, study actually also led to policy changes within the U.S. justice system. Not big ones, but this was the thing that made them stop housing youthful offenders with adults while they awaited trial, which is not a bad thing. Wise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in 2001, this study was actually replicated with one major difference. The guards were not given the goal of making the prisoners unhappy. They said that their job was to make sure the prison runs smoothly. but in this experiment, because there was no fear, the prisoners actually became a collective unit almost immediately, while the guards were never on the same page about anything. And within a few days, the prisoners had taken complete control over the simulated prison, <laughs> and they broke in and occupied the guards' quarters. Nice. <laughs> you ever watch, like, World's Toughest Prisons or anything like that? And they yeah. go to, like, the Brazilian ones, and all, the, all they do is they go, like, 
here, buddy, you go hang out with this guy. He's an inmate. He killed like 17 people, but he actually runs the prison. We just make sure this place, no one escapes. So I yeah. feel like that's what's <laughs> yeah. happening. They just stay on the perimeter and they let mm-hmm. like the biggest gangster ever. It's the same. It, they, they, they made the Brazilian version of the old one. The first one was like the North American fucking version of it. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's really it. Um, you know, I think a lot of this research has come in handy and has the potential to come in handy yeah that's the thing about unethical stuff that uh like research especially like think of like what the nazis did they didn't they didn't do very much nice stuff but they fucking advanced a lot of medical research and shit just by being assholes right sure whether that's whether that's okay or not we we've been benefiting from it for a long time right so same thing with military experiments right mk ultra and stuff yeah have you benefited from mk ultra except for like the born identity movies project paperclip well the field of interrogation and torture certainly has oh i guess so yeah so i mean i'm sure that's prevented a lot of like terrorist attacks and shit if we want to get really down into the nitty-gritty because they say that mk ultra kind of started like the hippie movement because the government put acid onto the streets right now some of these guys that went through the mk ultra shit were like having a blast with the acid they're like this stuff's awesome and they were just I'm getting sure it from the government <laughs> No, I know, but not everybody was damaged from this. Some people were like, and then they left the experiment and were like, we want more of that. And it kind of like flooded the streets after that. Who the hell, who was it? Okay, (laughs) it might have been on one of the crazy talks that I was listening to, but somebody said, he was like, yeah, the hippies just welcomed the Vietnamese vets back. It's like, no, they booed them off stage. They spit on them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they did not welcome them back. (laughs) Which is all the more sad when you consider the fact that 60% 60% of them didn't even want to be there in the first place. They didn't want to be there. Forrest yeah. Gump. If no one understands it, watch Forrest Gump. I love Just that movie. Drop them into the goddamn forest and watch them run. The fucking name. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was this guy talking up there, and boy, did he like to cuss. But talking about that guy that was giving the speech. <laughs> When he's in Washington. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the it fucking name. My favorite part of that whole movie is whenever he's like, Jenny, I think you should just probably come back home to Greenbow, Alabama. Whenever he- <laughs> <laughs> Jenny's a dick. She was a piece of shit. Yes. Yeah. She just gives him AIDS and says, fuck you. Gives him gives him a kid and then dies. Yeah. 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 Well, let's let's be honest he probably has aids too at this point after that no oh for wrong? sure yeah yeah, oh, so yeah, she, yeah she gave him aids too and a kid and then dies and then leaves it wasn't right? aids it was hep c <sighs> was it hep c i thought she died from aids i thought that was no, the reason she died. no writer said it was hep c well he didn't do a good from job at conveying that in the movie because up until three seconds ago i thought jenny died of hiv and i've seen that movie 417 times <laughs> <laughs> But the writer said it in the special comment because of her so. shooting up drugs. Yeah, it was yeah. her drug use that gave yeah. her hep. I can give you AIDS too, but um, listen, <laughs> I just thought Richard said, I will give you AIDS. <laughs> I like I said, I had AIDS once and then I gave it to someone, <laughs> and that's it, you don't ever have it again. <laughs> That's how it works, right? It follows. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. Head on over to our Facebook and Instagram to join in on the conversations about all things unethical. Just search Unethical Podcast. You can also find us on Patreon, where you can get access to all of our super awesome content, uncut videos of our discussions, and early release of all the episodes. We are adding fun stuff all the time, so you should definitely come and check it out. Thanks again. We appreciate all of you. Shimmy, shimmy, ya, shimmy, ya, shimmy, ya. Baby, I got your money. Hey. Dirty.